the Hill. We are at the critical phase, in my view. Uh, we have this uh, monstrosity of central planning. Uh, uh, it's been a long, hot August uh, for Obamacare. And it could well be on the verge of collapse. Um, I think that is a real possibility. Great. Right. Thank you, sir. Let me just um, <clears throat> summarize our goals uh, for the healthcare area uh, in the spring and early summer of this year. Our major objective um, was to deal with uh, the, the, to reach the goal of not having a full vote on a health bill before the August recess. We felt that once this Clinton-style legislation uh, went to the people and they actually looked at it, the same thing would happen to it as happened to the Clinton plan, once people actually evaluated. So our strategy was to make sure there was no full vote before the August recess. And we did that in a number of ways uh, at Heritage, as you did. Uh, we pointed out the worst features of the legislation from its boards and czars uh, and public plan. We also attempted to keep the Senate talking about health care, particularly the Finance Committee. The last thing we wanted was for that to come to a, a conclusion, either a bipartisan conclusion, or for the Democrats to consolidate and write off the Republicans. So we tried to keep them talking all through, this, through that period, I think, with great success. Let's look ahead, because in my view, we're now at the danger point where this could easily we could easily throw away the gains that we've had so far. Make no mistake, uh, Mr. Obama and the, and the Democrats will come back. Uh, I don't believe they will primarily come back with just a cheaper version of what they're doing. I think if I'm right and this legislation collapses, they'll come back with a different strategy. And it's, my, it's what I see as the nightmare scenario and it is very similar to what happened after the collapse of Clinton Care. I think they'll come back with things like an expansion of the S-CHIP program to say all children must be covered in America and start going up the income level again. I think they will come forward with what they will call rights bills, which will say things like everybody in America should have the right to affordable health care and health insurance. That means price controls on insurance. They will say everybody should have the right uh, to affordable drugs, which that means price controls on pharmaceuticals. I think you're getting the picture that this is in fact what will happen. Tax neutral tax reform is precisely what we should be arguing for, in my view. And again, there's actually bipartisan <coughs> positions on that uh, in, that we should be drawing attention to. So let me quote Frank Luntz at the end. Uh, <laughs> as Frank Luntz says, it's not enough to say what you are against, you have to tell them what you're for. And I think the danger right now is that if we only talk about what we're against, and if these members come back to the Hill, and we're, all, we're still only talking about what we are against, the, the Democrats and Mr. Obama will think of new things that they're for. And just like the period after the Clinton period, that is going to be very difficult to resist unless you do tell people what you are actually for. And that's what we intend to do. Uh, I urge you to do exactly the same and to uh, strongly underscore the importance of having a vision of uh, what we're actually for in America. I'm concerned with a certain complacency that exists about the subject of Iran. Sure, it pops up here and there. The Iranians do something in the Persian Gulf. The Iranians supply weapons to uh, <coughs> Lebanon. They get caught supplying uh, weaponry to the insurgency in Iraq or in Afghanistan. But it almost seems like there is a an underlying assumption that is growing, and it's extremely dangerous, that no one will be able to stop the Iranian nuclear programs. That ultimately, the West will acquiesce to a nuclear Iran. And I think this is happening for a variety of reasons. One reason is that people are saying to themselves, well, you know, North Korea went nuclear. The sky didn't fall. Um, Pakistan went nuclear, the world survived. So it won't be pleasant having a nuclear Iran, but the world will live on. It's not such a great disaster. There's also a sense that it's far away. If you're in North America, well, that's Lebanon, that's Israel's problem. It doesn't affect uh, the security of the United States. It doesn't affect the security of the United Kingdom. And, um, my concern 
is that this issue hasn't been fully analyzed. There is also an underlying assumption that, hey, there was deterrence once upon a time during the Cold War. The United States had Minuteman missiles, had a Trident submarines, it held at bay the enormous nuclear strength of the Soviet Union, and Iran with a couple of missiles and a few nuclear warheads. Come on, it'll be held in check. You know what, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton has even made an offer to Arab states that are as nervous, if not more nervous than Israel about a nuclear Iran, saying, you know what, we'll give a defensive shield over some of these countries. <clears throat> so all of that is part of uh, perhaps a growing sense that the uh, that a nuclear Iran is something we're simply going to live with. And I think there's a tremendous mistake being made here, and that's what I try and talk about in my book. First of all, Iran is not just Israel's problem. It is true. The supreme leader of Iran, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, has said that Israel should be wiped off the pages of history. It is true the Iranians, back in 2002, took his phraseology, put it on a billboard, and attached it to a, uh, to a truck carrying a Shihab-3 missile that can strike Israel. So they made the link between the rhetoric and the military threat to the country I come from. And it's true that uh, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, the uh, president of Iran, said Israel should be wiped off the, uh, wiped off the map. It's very close to his uh, original statement. But Iran is now projecting power all across the Middle East, and it will affect the whole Middle East. Iran is determined to achieve regional supremacy across the region. The United States is a very strong country. You know what? Israel is a strong country. But if we are weak up here, if our concepts of Iran and global politics are misinformed, we can make huge mistakes which we'll pay for in future generations. <coughs>